Now, for all of you math lovers, the time has come. Genetics involves a lot of math. Now, so far, we've avoided doing any math because we've been using Punnett's method, which is a science that discovered a, a, a way to just represent what's happening with segregation and fertilization of the genes using a Punnett square. But there is an easier way to do everything without actually having to do all that work. The math is actually easier the way I think of it. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about probability and how you can use this probability to, to actually make genetics problems easier. And so let's talk about how that works. Now, first of all, remember when we were doing those uh, dihybrid crosses and we were trying to figure out how many gametes each person should uh, have. And so for someone, something like this, for example, where we have uh, the, the four the hybrid for both traits, we had four possible gametes with R, Y, Big R connects to the little y, the, then the little y can connect to the big y, and the little r with the little y. And then, how about something like this? Uh, you can do it again, and so the same thing, the big R can go with the little y, and the big R can go with the other little y, or the little y can go with the little, uh, well, little r can go with the little y, and so forth. So you can have these four types of gametes, however, uh, two of them are pretty much the same. So you can only get two gametes out of that, that guy. Then you have little r, little r, and little y, little y. And like that, you have four gametes that pretty much look the same because no matter how you distribute it, you always get the same. And so they're all the same. Basically, they're all the same. Now, what you're starting to see here is a pattern, right? Um, at least I hope you see a pattern. And we'll see what, what I'm talking about here. Notice that there's two hybrids here and four gametes there. Notice there's one hybrid here and then two gametes there. Notice that there's no hybrids here, and then there's one gamete there. Now, you can pause now and try to figure out with math what is the pattern that you see here. Uh, one hybrid equals two gametes. Two hybrids equals... Uh, well, sorry about that. What? This is all bad. Let me fi 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 fix this again. Hold on a second. You get no hybrids gives you one gametes. Uh, one hybrid is going to give you two gametes. And then you know, when you get to two hybrids, you get to four gametes. So what is this pattern that's happening here? How does zero equal one, one equals two, and two equals four? Now, if you think about it, if you get the number two and you raise it to the power of zero, you get one. So 2 to the power of this 0, you get 1. If you get the number of 2 and you raise to the power of 1, you're going to get 2. Just like this 1 here gets the 2. And if you get the number 2 and you raise to the number of 2, like that 2, you'll get a 4. So what is the pattern here? The pattern that we're seeing is that you get the number of 2 and you raise that to the power of the hybrids that you have in the thing. So where n is the number of hybrids, of hybrids. And so you, if you get the number of hybrids and you, and you, and you get two to, to that, you will get them. Now remember, powering does not mean multiplication. Do not make that silly mistake. Two to two is not, it, it happens to be four. But when you get a two to the power of three, that is not six. Do not make this mistake. You get slapped. Two to the power of three is 8 because what you're doing is 2 times 2 times 2 so do not make that mistake right now let's try to apply this rule to this before we actually do it I uh, you see two hybrids here so that's 2 to the power of hybrids which is 2 so you should get 4 hybrids let's see if that's the case you can do a big A with the big B with the big C right so let's see that big A with the big B with the big C. You can also do the big A with the little B with the big C. You can also do the little A with all those things. And these are all the possible things. Four gametes for something that has diabetes. So now you see here, this will be a tetra a, a trihybrid uh, cross that we're going to be doing here because I'm following three, three traits at once. What if I'm following four traits at once? See how it starts getting harder? You don't want to be distributing that to find out how many hybrids you have. Let's find out how many hybrids we have by doing math. Well, 2 to the power of hybrids. How many hybrids do you see? This is not a hybrid, so you don't count it. You have 1, 2, 3 hybrids, so that's 2 to the power of 3, which will be 
eight gametes. Now, if you actually distribute and try to find all the gametes, you see that it has these eight gametes. What about this one? Again, you have double A, double A, that's not a hybrid. B, 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 that's not a hybrid. This is a hybrid, but D, D, D is not a hybrid. So you only have one hybrid. So you're going to get two to the power of one, which should be two. So you should only have two gametes. And you see that that's true, because the only way you can make this, that guy is like that. There's the only two options. Oh, sorry, we would have to have the big D, big D here. Let me fix that. That is pretty much the only two options you can get. Now, what about this one, where we have four hybrids for traits? So it will be two to the power of four, which is two times two times two times two, which is 16. So you get 16 different gametes. So there you go. Now, what does that mean? If you're doing a cross that's involving this person, if you're doing a cross that's involving this person, your Punnett square will have to have 16 freaking columns. Can you imagine that Punnett square? 16 columns? What if you get this guy with 16 columns and you cross them with this guy that has 8 gametes? That means you're going to do something that's 16 columns in 8 rows. Can you imagine how many boxes are in that and how long it would take you to figure out that Punnett square? Clearly, Punnett squares are not the best way to calculate probabilities of, of uh, genetic problems. And so on our next video, we're going to be talking about how to actually do that much, much easier. All right, so we're going to start by talking about probability and how, what is probability and how you can use it in regular math. And then we're going to apply the same probability to actual genetics problems. I'll see you in the next video.